Hello everybody and welcome back to the Weeb Family Basement. We are the Weeb Family. We're a lot like your family, except for we make each other read each other's manga. <laughs> and that is why we're here today. We're here because, first of all, uh, in our last haul video, a couple of people said that they want to know my thoughts on After the Rain. So we read it and we're going to discuss that. And then for some reason you made me read my happy marriage volumes one and two for reasons that i don't know but. because you don't read any shoujo romance mm -hmm. and then you keep calling uh shonen romance shonen joe which yes. i feel like you say that in a derogatory way i do i really do but what I'm saying is, is there is a difference. There's like, as soon as you yes. pick up a romance, you can tell the difference between whether it's shonen or shoujo. Yes, that's true. Um, and real quick, I know there's people furiously typing. I know after the rain is seinen. When I say shonen Joe, Joe say and shonen and shoujo, that's all interchangeable. I don't need the demographic For warriors. guys, for girls is what you're saying. Yeah, it, it, it's for technically four guys it's in a guys magazine but like it, more women in the west read it but whatever um before we get into this um if if you're enjoying this video make sure you arrange a marriage with the like button and on the third day kick it to the curb and do the same thing if you dislike the video okay and, and make sure you're subscribed and uh, you really it, did read that show, Joe, didn't you? I did read it because I read all the books for the episode, mm. unlike what you accuse me of with Rent a Really Shy Girlfriend. But um, and if you need any more of these spicy takes, uh, head over to our Instagram page. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, but I haven't tweeted since before Elon took over, so whatever. Um, any other housekeeping items before we get into this? So let's pick up where you left off here. Let's talk about... You're, you're talking about that there's a clear difference between shoujo romance stories and shonen. And well, again, we're using shoujo and... When we say shonen and shoujo, let that also be short for seinen and jose as well. We're not... We're saying boys and girls. Yes. So what I thought was hilarious was the other day you're like... Mm -hmm. I figured out the difference between, uh, you know, a, a, a shonen romance and a shoujo romance. And I was like, oh, really? No, I didn't say it like that. But I have been doing a lot of studying. And, uh, <laughs> well, because I've watched those videos by that one YouTuber that I can't think of her name right now. I have colleen manga rex sure because she's the shoujo youtube manga crusader right and she's done a lot of videos on the difference between shonen romances and shoujo romances mm -hmm. right but i was talking about these two books in particular okay that it's easy to pick out which one is you know geared towards guys and which one's geared towards women yeah and i will let this be the plot synopsis for these two before we dive okay, into okay. it so we're not in spoilers this is still just the pre-game talk right so after the rain is about a girl who ran track and due to a horrific uh, leg injury or foot injury uh can no longer compete and she has a crush on a much older guy she gets a job at a diner yeah well, because of the guy working there. But, I mean, I guess, but you don't know yeah, that immediately. That's true. She has a job at a diner and she has right. a crush on her boss. Yes. Who's like, she's 17 and he's 45. So yes. obviously Inappropriate. Huge, huge age gap there. Uh, My Happy Marriage is about a girl uh, roughly in the um, Thai show period. So, like a fantasy Thai show period. Yeah, circa 1910. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, and she is being uh, put in an arranged marriage with this dude on the cover uh, who's like a, a lord. There's also, in this world, there's people with powers, but it's... That's why I said fantasy. It's it, it, but it's really in the background, at yeah, least so far. Yeah, and I, 
I like that. But yes, the fantasy yeah. part is in the background. You, mm-hmm. At some point, you could say, why is the fantasy even mm-hmm. part of the story? Sure. But I think what makes this more of shoujo romance is that it's all about the feelings of the girl and more about um, what's my worth as a woman, how do I escape my uh, station in life, how do I accept my station in life, what are the marginal changes I can do, Um, whereas After the Rain is more like, I'm a 45 year old dude with a teenage girl attracted to me. Oh yeah. And it's not, it's not like to summarize. Yeah. Female perspective. Yeah. Male perspective. Yeah. Even though your main character is a girl, this is still like, well, it's targeted to guys because the older guys are man fantasy. Yes. Well, because older men in Japan are reading this magazine. So it's geared. But I mean, it's so clear. This is old man fantasy. This is young girl fantasy. And maybe the whole concept of Shonen Joe only exists in the West because manga is not put out in uh, anthology magazines. Right. Like, for example, Berserk. A lot of people don't know this, but I know this because I looked into it. Berserk, Berserk and Gal Gohan, they were published in the same magazine. It's not actually a manga magazine, right? So, like, Shonen Jump is a manga magazine. You're going to get it. It's chock full of Shonen Jump manga and ads, right? But Berserk was published in, I think, was it Young Animal magazine? And it's a porno mag, right? So, you're going to flip through it. You're going to see... I mean, it's what they call, like, grab here. So, it's, like, softcore porn. Mm-hmm. So, not even as pornographic as playboy used to be but like you're flipping through it you're mainly getting it for the women in uh, skimpy clothing and then every now and then you get a chapter of a manga right Mm. so i'm not sure what publication after the rain was published in but like that's the concept behind it but i think the one of the main reasons why you get shonen joe in the u.s is because this isn't published in a porno mag it's just on the bookshelf a lot of women see it and they're like, oh, this looks like a cute romance. I'm going to pick it up. And guys know? see cute romance and like, that's not they're for me. They're just like, no, dame, dame. Well, yeah. and it's also, they're not categorized. Like we were mm-hmm. in the bookstore the other day and right. daughter was like, I wish they would put things out by genre and right. not just say manga. Because then she could go to a section and be like. But hey, to be fair, they're starting to do it because now the manga section at most of our Barnes and Nobles, you have the manga section, light novel section, and LGBT yeah. section. They are separating out yeah. the LGBT, but this. But whatever, it's it's more yeah. genre based. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're slowly getting there, you know. Yeah, but, it's, uh, but most mm-hmm. most places still do it just alphabetically. Yeah, so uh, I feel like I have so much to say about both of these. But it's hard to do it. I I don't know. I think what we need to do now is we've given the elevator pitch on both of these. Uh, Let's pick one and travel with it and uh, give our numerical rating. And uh, I think we should go with After the Rain first since we both read that first. Okay. So we're going to give our numeric score on After the Rain. We've already said what it's about. A girl has a crush on an older guy. Um, Do you want me to go first with my rating? Yeah, go ahead. I did not like this as much as Kowloon, mm. but I still enjoyed it. But I think it's at a solid seven mm. out of ten for me. Maybe even a six point five. Between a six and a seven. See, I'm between a, like a five and a six. Okay, so we're not that. We're far not apart. that far apart. But mm-hmm. this is definitely the kind of book that I would not get more of and not mm-hmm. read more of mm-hmm. if you didn't already get it. Now, you went and got all yes, the volumes. Yes, I got all the volumes. So I'm going to read them because you got them because mm-hmm. it's not bad. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's definitely not something I would be interested in. Mm-hmm. Did you like this more or less than Kowloon? More. Or about the same, really? Do you not remember my ratings for Kowloon? No. I'm pretty sure it was pretty low. Well, we never did a formal thing Yeah, like I guess this. we never did. Yeah. No, Kowloon would be like a four. Okay. But again, that's another instance of, I know you're getting it, so I'm going to keep reading it. Uh, I want to start with some of the things that I liked about this. Um, 
again, June uh, Mayuzuki, Mayuzuki is one of the best manga creators who really uses moment to moment transitions with their panels. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to highly recommend people read uh, Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud, where he goes over different panel transitions. To me, and you might disagree, uh, Mayuzuki does such a great job of like characters are talking and we'll have a frame of the character looking one way and then turning their eyes. It just gives like a really zoomed in cinematic kind of feel to it. I know that cinematic is the right word, but she is really good at panel layouts. Well, and by cinematic, I mean everything's just flowing like it's animating in my mind. My mind doesn't have to do as much of the gap filling. I guess if that's not what you want to say. But, I mean, I just, I see it as panel layout. Yes, the panel layouts are really good. So good at it. Um, uh, I don't know. As I'm thinking about it, there's not too much I did that I disliked. I would say that the pacing is a bit slow. It the pacing takes, is weird. Yeah. Because um, it does take a while to get to, like, mm-hmm. why her ankle was mm-hmm. hurt, how it was hurt, what mm-hmm. motivated her to get a job at the right. diner. And, I mean, I guess that's fine, but it did take a bit. Yeah. I mean, I, if we're talking about if this is two volumes in one, right. it wasn't until, like, the second volume that you learned those things. Yeah, and I should say we're now in spoiler territory. At least for After At least the Rain. for, yeah, After the Rain, volume one. Uh, I'll put a timestamp. You can jump to straight to My Happy Marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, now let's address the elephant in the room, because I know there's so many people who are already disliking this video, already ranting on their keyboard that this is an inappropriate age gap and we shouldn't be okay. supporting this and blah blah blah. So without knowing an ending cuz I feel mm-hmm. I feel like an ending might change sure. a person's opinion about how the story goes. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is a somewhat accurate description of people making bad decisions. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I suppose. Because as a teenager like, you could say, oh, you can't decide who you love, but also it's like, dude, mm-hmm. you understand that this is inappropriate. Like, she knows it's not it's not appropriate. She understands mm-hmm. that. And then he, as a 45-year-old man, totally understands it is inappropriate and he should not have gone on that date with her. See, okay, yeah, he probably shouldn't. But when he suggested it, he was clearly trying to do, like, a reverse psychology. Kind and I of totally deal. understand yeah. that. But again, as an adult... When you say, oh, we should go on a date together. And she says, yes, he's, he's like, he should have been like, you're stupid. No. Okay, but I think the thing that you won't give this character credit for is he was not as bad as the teacher and Gal go on, right? He, I'm not, he, I'm not judging characters against each other. I'm saying this is the situation that he's in. I don't, I thought he was mostly okay. Until he went on the date with her? Oh, whatever. They just went and saw And then the it's, movie. to me, it's creepy. Now... Maybe because, you know, people have thoughts in their head and these thoughts Mm -hmm. are private and more than like, not more than likely, if thoughts are private, no one else knows what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. But as a reader, I know what he's thinking. And they show me he's thinking of himself as a 17-year-old hanging out with Mm -hmm. this 17-year-old and it's kind of creepy gross. Like, See, I just didn't see it that way. But I see it that way because it's he's like... He's in a bad situation with his ex. Right. He's kind of in a bad situation with his son. Like, he doesn't, he, he's not a good manager. Like, he constantly is like, has, mm-hmm. he's, people are telling him how he's such a bad manager. So, overall, we're looking at him saying he doesn't like his life. <sighs> he's in a situation, that, and so he's trying in, at least in his mind at this point, I don't know how it goes in the future, he's trying to escape that by imagining himself as a 17-year-old with this 17-year-old, and it's kind of creepy and gross. Now, again, if that stays as a fantasy in your head, that's something else, but he went on a date with her. That's acting out on that fantasy, and it's gross. I don't think it's gross. I mean, like, okay, let let me rephrase this. If this were not fiction, then obviously it would be gross. But that's what I'm saying. So, this is... A good story about people making bad decisions. Yes, but that's what makes stories interesting. If everyone... did I not say that I'm continuing reading it? Yes. I'm saying, look, okay, a good story can make you angry and not like it. Mm-hmm. 
And I guess I wouldn't call this a good story. I think it's well written, but I don't like it. I mean, I the I had actually forgotten that thing that you had mentioned, and he did it twice. And I th- actually think that that's low key brilliant because where the conflict is coming in here with the story is that you have these two people who are broken, right? And uh, for uh, why I can never remember. I don't remember names, names whenever we're oh, doing this stuff. God. I need to make notes on uh, character names, but uh, uh, the main girl is broken in a physical sense because she's lost her purpose in life. She can't be a competitive uh, runner anymore, right? And uh, she had the nice service from the manager guy, uh, and that's why she decided to work there and how she had the crush on him. So... It's a person with a moment of weakness who got a lifeline from an unexpected place. And that's what's generating these feelings. And the manager, and I think you're being unfair, because when he first first finds out about the crush, right? He he does try to squash it. He does try to put some reality into it. And that's what all these it. stories are like. But, oh, I tried to stop her. She just kept coming on to me. No, and that's I'm not, the fantasy. I'm not, okay, yes, but I'm not saying that's what's happening here. What I'm saying is being the older guy whose best days are behind him and having a second chance at feeling young and feeling passion is what's you know driving his actions. Why does he need... A 17-year-old girl to feel young. No, he doesn't. He could probably mm. date a 35-year-old woman and uh, have the same result. I, I'm not saying he's making great decisions, but what I'm saying is it makes sense from a psychology standpoint, from a human condition standpoint. And I'm just saying... I, I think there's... You're there's, saying there's, she... It's so well no, written. you're saying she's broken. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to quite go with that interpretation. Mm-hmm. But she has a problem. And right. she's trying to work through it. And the more he learns about her, the more he understands that she has a problem, not mm-hmm. just physically, but mentally, that she's mm-hmm. trying to work through because she can't run anymore. Mm-hmm. And instead of being the adult in the situation saying, I see that you're struggling mentally. I see Mm -hmm. that you're struggling not being able to do the thing that you want to do. And, oh, wow, you're you're transferring these feelings and emotions onto me because you feel stuck and can't go Mm -hmm. forward. And it's just like you need to be the adult in the situation. That's why I hate these stories, because I hate age gap stories because it's like it's clear that as the adult in the situation you need to be the adult you need to tell the child look you're feeling things i get it they're valid feelings but we need to transfer those feelings in another direction and maybe uh that'll happen and it's also just easier to say that when you're not a 45 year old dude like with a divorce and a kid and Wow. And you're balding wow. and all this. Yeah, what? male fantasy. I'm totally the admitting The 17 this. year old girl who is broken is going to yes. save the 45 year old man I totally who made agree bad decisions in I, his marriage. I agree that it's male fantasy. There, we're, we're not arguing over that because I agree with and you. And the other thing that kind of annoys me about this. Mm-hmm. So as a reader, you have this situation between right. a very inappropriate age gap. <sighs> And to make him more desirable Mm -hmm. as a, uh, as a choice for the 17 year old girl, they introduce, introduce another inappropriate age gap, the 20 something guy who's trying to take her on dates, actually blackmailing her into dates. So by comparison, oh, she wants to go out with a 40 year old guy and the 20 year old guy is blackmailing her into dates. So yeah. he must be better than the guy who's blackmailing her. I mean, I didn't see it like that, but sure. In both instances, like it's just. See, I, I'm going to say something. That's a girl's point of view that guys I, don't catch. I'm going, to, I'm going to say something controversial here. Mm. The relationship between her and the 20 year old is actually creepier than No, no, uh, I definitely agree. Okay, it's creepier yeah. because mm-hmm. one, they like I will say this. Mm-hmm. The 40 45-year-old guys cuz they're giving us thoughts. All right, people get ready to timestamp yeah. Andy right there. Yeah. But they they give us the unlike her, they don't mm-hmm. really give us her thoughts unless she says them out loud, right? Mm-hmm. 
um, for the guys, they actually have given us their fantasies, right? So the 45-year-old mm -hmm. guy, he's imagining himself as a 17-year-old and what it would be like. And it's kind of in a creepy way. It's more wholesome because he's like, I wish I was 17. And I mm -hmm. get that. That's why I say it's like, I understand it, but it's still frustrating. Whereas the 20-year-old is fantasizing, ah, oh, I can have, it'll be her first time. I'll get her drunk and then have mm. sex with her, which yes, is creepier. And those are his thoughts, which are worse. So right. it's like, yeah, the 20 year old dude is creepier. So what mm. they're doing is they're putting forth the 20 year old, he's mm. worse than the 45 year old. So again, I don't know how the story ends, but they're setting it up that mm. it's better that she's with, we're only giving out of the whole world, we're only giving this girl two choices. And it's either the creepy 20 year old, the dorky 16 year old, or, the kind 45 year old i don't know i think she's gonna end up with a third option like if i like okay i don't know why i like tragic romances but i do because it's almost like i see that they're heading you know 88 miles per hour with no flux capacitors straight into a brick wall and it's going to be... I mean, yeah, I guess you like tragedies. <laughs> I, I guess so. Like, I know this is going to crash and burn, but I'm just so curious how that's going to happen and and all that. Like, I don't think they're going to end up together. And I don't need any spoilers or anything. I'm going to read it. But, like, I think he's going to have a come to his senses moment. I think he is eventually going to do the right thing. The question is, is what happens between him choosing to do I know, the right thing? I know, that's what makes it interesting. That's, and is he really choosing to do the right thing listen, if things if, go too far? If the if you had written this, it would have been like, oh, I like you, I have a crush on you. Hey, let's uh, stop. Hey, I wouldn't have therapy. written an age gap because I don't like that. Whatever, I'm saying pretend you did. And mm. then you'd be like, oh, let's get some therapy, let's work on yourself. You love you first, and then it would be over in one volume. Look. I'll, I agree. Yeah. It is a well-written story about people mm -hmm. making bad decisions. And let's make a comment here. Kudos to uh, Mayuzuki for writing the male perspective really well as a female creator. I mean... That woman is in touch she, with her uh, masculine side. I, I think sure. so, yeah. yeah. Unless Jin is... I, mean, I guess guy. it could be a guy. I don't know if I'm Jin is a sure, guy. I'm pretty sure it's a woman, but whatever. Mm -hmm. I know the whole internet will. Either way, me, so. it's they're very in touch with what yeah. a guy thinks in this. I don't think they're so in touch with what girls mm. think, though. So maybe it is the guy. So, I did enjoy this a good bit. I'm definitely looking forward to reading more. I bought the rest of them, so you did. Um, that should give everyone an indication of how I uh, felt about it. So, um, I don't know that I have too much more to say about this one. We can transition over to My Happy Marriage. Yep. And I think you're going to give this like a 10 out of 10. What, what's your numerical rating on I this? I mean, it's really hard to get a 10 out of 10. It's mm. probably like a 9. Mm. And that won a uh, Weeby Award, didn't it? The, yeah. the Flyer Award? Yeah. yeah. Um, without having an ending, I don't think I could give it a 10. It's probably mm. like a, a nine. eight and a half, yeah. nine. I'm going to give it a 5. You knew it was going to happen. See, this is why I don't know why you want me to read your books. Because you know I'm not going to like well, them. Well, okay. So, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You like this because... You like this mm -hmm. because of the human tragedy of it, right? Mm -hmm. And this is full of, like, abuse and someone overcoming the abuse that their family mm -hmm. is given. And, like, I feel like in a... Like, it is... Um, Marketed as like a Cinderella story kind yeah. of, right? Which is understandable. It does have that feel. But like when you hear most Cinderella stories, it's more like, oh, she was abused by her stepsisters and her stepmother. Mm -hmm. But what's the abuse? Like, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, she has to clean. And yeah, but it's like you don't feel that well, abuse of oppressive nature. Well, Cinderella is written for like eight-year-olds, so. There are plenty, ver plenty of versions of Cinderella. But what That's I'm saying cool. is... In this version, like, the the mistreatment that she feels, it feel, I felt, is very oppressive as I was reading it. Like, I could feel how she was just, like, put down. Like, put down in a way where, like, 
she didn't feel like she could mm. mo take a step forward without asking permission from anyone first. And then like also like another thing that they tend to not do in a Cinderella story is like they talked about how like basically emaciated she was so much like she looked she was so skinny and so bony mm. she looked like she could break like those are things and they even like portrayed that when you go from volume one to volume two like they do mm. kind of change the way she looks they make her like less bony and I just I thought you would be a little more interested in that <laughs> portrayal of like you know, I think the only manga that I read that is legitimately about abuse is uh, Blood on the Tracks. I think that's about the only one. So you don't think it's abusive that they took her mother's things away and burned them in front of her face? You don't oh, think no, it's no. abusive that they made her clean house in no, her own I... house and her sister didn't have no. to clean? Like, you no, can't... You, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. I'm not saying that this is not abusive. It is. I'm just saying, like, you're saying, like, oh, you should like this because it has abuse and stuff in it. And I'm trying to figure out where that comes from because I can only think of one No, I didn't mean it. abuse. Like, more... Also, you make it sound like I just enjoy seeing people be abused. I do not. That, you read Die Weregelder. That is not about abuse. That is about... <laughs> Torture? You know, but but it's adults and it's Yakuza. You it know? doesn't... It's still, Yakuza like... Yakuza don't even have souls. It's fine. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. the abuse of human beings and the human condition seems mm -hmm. to be a theme in a lot of the things that you read. I mean, I read a lot of dark and gritty seinen, yes. And I guess what I was saying is, is this had a flavor of abuse, but it was more like a mental uh, abuse. You want to know it. what it is? And we're, we're, we're like in the spoiler section now. I mean, I thought we were for a while now. Well, we didn't explicitly say it, so people could click away if they need to. Yeah, okay. He, you're probably just going to get mad at me for saying this. She, she's just too depressing. Because every page, she I have to be reminded that she grew up horribly. She doesn't think she's worth anything. And why would Lord Kudo like like me? And I, I was just like, shit her get off the pot, lady. Like, this is too depressive. Too depressing. I just, we just talked about the things that you mm. read. Yeah. Like, and Die Wergelder, no one's going around being like, oh, am I worthy? Yes, they're not, not paralyzed yeah. by fear. Yeah. Sorry, not everyone can be like, ah, someone abused me? Let me go cut their dick off. Like, that's not what every woman, that's you not their immediate reaction. Me, you know who she reminded me of? What? Shinji from Evangelion. Not even close. No, with their lack of self-confidence and all this stuff. Like, she was just sad and making me depressed the whole time. And I'm just like, not interested. What? <laughs> Look at me like this. I just, I can't believe that that was your takeaway from this. I mean, that was a takeaway. It wasn't like the only takeaway. Well, what other takeaway do you have? Well... <sighs> I think this goes back to, you know, uh, shoujo versus shonen type romance. And the thing that I kept thinking about while reading it is, man, it has to suck to be a woman. Like, especially back in the day. Like, obviously in general, because you guys make like 23 cents on the dollar and you get cat called. Listen, I am very sensitive to the plight of women, okay? I really am. I think, it may not, I think a it lot may of people case. don't understand that. No, they, they don't because like, <laughs> well, they don't, they don't have normal conversations with me, right? Because like, here's the thing. I can open up my email on any given day, no problem, right? But a lot of women, they open up their email every day, penis, like right there. Right? And that's like an everyday thing for a lot of women. I can walk down the street most times and unless there's like a drunk person driving by yelling penis out the window, I have no problems, right? But I know a lot of women, they walk down the street and they get cat called, they get followed. They get, I get it. Okay? And he I, gets it. We, we, we were even in, in the car like I'm probably going to get in trouble on this one. But, like, uh, I don't understand trans women, right? Because, like, 
why would you go from the societal position of privilege to like the unprivileged position? It doesn't make sense to me, right? Like, and it's fine. People can transition. I have nothing against trans people. This is not an anti-trans thing. I'm, I'm acknowledging that there's male privilege. I'm acknowledging that it's fucking awesome. And I have trouble understanding why someone would want to be a woman because it's so bad. And in this manga, I, all the bad stuff is pointed out. Like, like, I mean, it is. Maybe that's and okay. So we're talking about mm-hmm. male fantasy, yeah, female fantasy. Mm-hmm. That like whether this is written by a man or written by a woman, mm-hmm. it is clear that they have a real grasp of what what men want to yeah. hear. They want to hear that a seventeen year old girl is attracted to them. I'm going to keep it on one hundred, and you're going to hate me for this. I would be over the moon if a 17-year-old had a crush on me. I wouldn't act. I would not act on it. I want to make that 100% clear. But the ego boost that would give me. Mm. I'm just. I'm just. I'm keeping a 100. And any guy watching this that doesn't think the same thing is a fucking liar. Okay. And I bet you if there's any 45-year-old women watching this. Having a 17-year-old guy have a crush on them, it's going to boost their ego, too. Now, we don't act on this stuff. It's illegal. 100% do not act Only on it. Only because it's illegal. No, you, there, there's moral reasons, too. But the legal issue is obviously the biggest one. Okay? But can I, can I get back to why being a woman sucks? Oh, especially God. in this manga. <laughs> and I just mean from a societal standpoint. I don't mean, like, you're a woman, woe is you. But, like, in this... The guy is, you know, thinking about like, you know, living life and what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to do with my kid? This woman's uh, sole existence, uh, Mio is her name. I read this more recently, yeah. so I remember the names. But like, all Mio Mio does every day is worry about is uh, Master Kudo going to keep me around. And, but that and that all stems from like, her family, though. I know because we it takes place in this world where the no real one, world no almost one, no one gives a shit about women. The women are literally only there to make alliances and to sell off and to get yeah. money and well, stuff and like that's, that. And I yeah. guess so. As a woman, mm-hmm. even though I don't live in that era, mm-hmm. I do understand that. I understand that perspective. I understand that perspective mm-hmm. of one. She's the oldest daughter, yet she's not treated as the oldest daughter, right. which the oldest daughter should have some privilege in this mm-hmm. world. Sure. And she doesn't get that. So then <clears throat> this weird other family wants her in their family, but they don't want to have to pay the price mm-hmm. of having, like, they don't want to have to spend extra dollars to get there in their family. Yeah. So they miss, they allow the can, mistreatment of can, her can, so that then they could, like, scoop her up on the side. But then she gets I, together with Kudo, and I'm just like... This is weird and ah, that was know, obnoxious and I didn't like that. But I, I mean, that makes for a good story. I know you're on a roll and I really hate to interrupt you, but. Sure you do, go no, ahead. No, I really do. But, but here's something I don't understand okay. is like dowries, right? Like I feel like, and I realize that this differs from culture to culture and all that, but like um, the way I've always been seen it presented is that the father of the bride gives the groom a dowry, uh, you know, because he's taking the daughter off the hands and he's going to take care of her and blah, blah, blah. It depends on the culture. I, I understand. And I know sometimes it's in reverse. Like yeah. in this, it's in it, reverse. In reverse, yeah. But like, it should be in reverse, right? It should be. Because, I'm going to be a little vulgar here, women have the pussy and guys want that. That's the commodity, right? Like, Well, they also, yeah. Okay, so like, in, even in, okay, women have, I wouldn't put it that way, but... Mm-hmm. Even in this story, mm-hmm. the reason why she is valuable, not to our main character, but mm-hmm. to the other family, is that she has the genes that right. they want. Because it's that whole power thing. Yeah, that's in the and background. so she would be the yeah. one carrying the baby, and that's what they want. So, in a sense, the dowry where it goes from the groom's family mm-hmm. to the bride's family makes more sense because you're quote unquote paying for the bride now yes in some cultures it goes the other way i'm just saying like here's the thing like the drug dealer doesn't pay you to take the drugs you pay the drug dealer to get the drugs 
right? <laughs> women are drugs. Okay. No, I mean we're already we're already objectifying <laughs> we're all, women. Yeah, I mean so. no. Okay, yes, in because we're talking about within the society in which yes. they are they are doing things, and so that's what makes this character. If I can, in, sorry. In, <laughs> in this world mm. where she is a commodity or right. a tainted commodity, is the whatever, father doesn't yeah. think that she's good. What makes this desirable in a uh, a female fantasy sense is that he desires her not for her genetics, not for her ability to mm. have children. It's just like he has a connection to her and he wants mm. he wants her to feel better. He wants her to be a better person, to have mm. a good life. He doesn't like that she was mistreated and all this kind of stuff. And so from a female fantasy point of view, he is a person who cares about her more than what her status is in general society. Yeah. So, yeah. All I was going to say, to put a bow on that last thing, is Because it's like, got to be mansplained to me. Fine, never mind. No, I go ahead. I no, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I guess what I was saying, you know, if, if the drug dealer analogy isn't working for you. Oh, we're cars? We're no, food? No, no. What are I'm, we? I'm, I'm going... Can we get another object going? No, I'm going even more academic. This is pure academic. When agent... A has a good or service that agent B wants. Agent B gives money to agent A to get that, right? It it's not agent A giving agent B money and the thing that they want. Yeah, unless yeah. agent B just comes along and steals it, which happens a lot too. I yeah, obviously, but uh, which I'm is trying. actually what happened in this. Agent will actually be agent C because it's a thing. Yeah, party, I know, but, but like Getting back to why this is definitely a romance geared towards women, because we're no longer fantasizing about being attracted to somebody or someone being attracted to us, like being out of my league. It's now about, I need people to, like I'm the ugly duckling and I need somebody to choose me. I need to break the uh, societal norms expected of me. And that's what I daydream about. Like it's, it's and, a totally different. No, 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 no it's feel. not. Because if you think about it, it's almost the same. Mm -hmm. Because they have clearly indicated that the manager is not attractive. Yes. Right. And that she has. He's, he's stinky. And he yeah. has weird taste. She has weird tastes yeah, for totally. liking him. Yeah. So you have this beautiful young seventeen-year-old girl liking mm -hmm. an unattractive forty-five-year-old man. Yes. So in this instance, you have a. I wouldn't call her ugly because they never say ugly outright. Well, no, they specifically say that she's like the ugly duckling waiting to become the beautiful. Well, but swan. she and she's not as pretty as her right. sister, right? Oh, and that's another thing that makes it towards women because every woman, I don't care how ugly they are or how pretty they are, all of them think they're the ugly duckling, and they need someone to validate them and turn them into the beautiful swan. I think that's what resonates with women. Okay. That one people can yell at me about in the comments. But, like I was that saying... That was probably an ignorant man take. But what I'm saying is if we're talking about fantasy, that's mm. male fantasy. Yes. So you are unattractive male, mm. beautiful young woman likes you. Yes. Unattractive or not as pretty as her sister, because mm. again, it's more about comparative against her sister. Mm -hmm. And you have this beautiful man mm. falling in love with her. So it's the same thing. Kind of, but this feels different because this Because is, I'm a dude and I can't no, relate to women. No, because this is framed as uh, breaking away from the objectification of women and not being treated as a commodity. Um, because I think that's the core of what's driving the story to make it interesting is that Kudo genuinely has feelings for Mio and it's... It's one of those things where it's like, okay, yeah, this is an arranged marriage, but it's the best of everything. I'm genuinely falling in love with the person that uh, I, I've been arranged to and everything like that, right? Like, Okay. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, I don't but. know what you were trying to say, because I feel like there was a but, and you were going to go over to the other one. Uh, maybe. This one's just pure, unadulterated... I like a 17-year-old girl. Kind of. Feelings. Like, this is more like, like you said, this is more like we're breaking societal norms in a mm -hmm. fantasy world. This is just, again, people making bad decisions. Sure. 
I, I don't disagree with that. I, I don't know what you want me to say. I don't know. I just, again, I thought there would be things in here that would appeal to you more than I guess that it Well, did. I'm pointing out the, the strengths of it. Like, okay, so let's just compare it to, like, other shoujo storytelling. And okay. Stuff like. I think Rin, a really shy girlfriend, was technically a shonen. That's shonen. Okay, but I'm just going to use it because it's shonen Joe, right? Uh but, but that's still a male perspective. No, I know. Well, I, I was trying to think of something I rated stupid low, right? But you just, have, but you have to have read it. And the only show, uh, the only, the, oh we talked, no, no, we talked, no, we talked about this the other day. The only show Joe you have read <coughs> are this, two volumes of this, mm-hmm. two volumes of uh, Yona Yonos. of the Dawn, yep. and Hot Gimmick, and Limit. I read Limit. Okay, well, and I Limit read, is not a romance, and so I we're talking about romance. Something's wrong with us, which is a Jose. That's Jose, and that's different. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is actual shoujo romance, and which I, I, I guess you're going to force me to read Imakoi. I mean, you could. And I've you no, have, you did. You we did a video on it. That would be the one you should compare it against. Okay, so I thought this was way better than Imakoi, because Imakoi is all. Oh, will senpai notice me and blah, blah, blah. I'm giving you that this has some good literature tropes in there. Like, I I think the commentary on the objectification of women in this, like, I don't know, turn of the uh, 20th century lens and the whole idea of arranged marriages and things like that, I thought that part was interesting. And maybe if it was more of that and less of... Uh, um, oh, woe is me. Can, so, can I... again, she's trying to overcome that. Because it's, it's not just a story about breaking societal trends. Oh, and I've read Fruits Baskets. And Golden Japanesque. Yeah. Oh, those are like some really old ones we read way back. Yeah. So I've, I've read some shoji, you know. Okay. Well, yeah. at least those are romance and you can compare Look, it against it. And, but and, what I was saying is, is and I ham- you can't, it's not just about breaking societal norms which in, it's not. No, I don't not. think it's about breaking them at all. It's just... A societal it, it, norm the, in, the, in that they fall in love with each other. I think, what I guess what I'm saying is the, the fantasy part for the woman comes into, uh, within the confines of these societal norms, she's finding happiness. Yeah. Uh, but but what, what I'm saying is, is like I feel like because you found her a depressing character, mm-hmm. like... <sighs> Because you find it hard to relate to people mm-hmm. who are not bold, you're finding it a struggle to relate to her overcoming the abuse, mm-hmm. the both physical and mental abuse that she had with her family, which I feel is like a, one of them is an even bigger part of the story. I mean, probably, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just telling you how I feel. I don't, I don't know what you want mm-hmm. me to say. Um, I mean, it, it obviously wasn't as good as Yona. Yona and Hot Gimmick are probably some of the best shoujo that I've read, and I've only read the two volumes of Yona. Um, but I didn't really struggle to get through this. I mean, I read it slowly. That's just because I didn't want to read it, but I got through it. Like, it wasn't like, okay, it wasn't like Fruits Basket where, like, it's putting me to sleep. Oh, and you I, and hated I, Fruits Basket. I hated Fruits Basket so much. Can I make a side note on Fruits Basket? Uh, omnibus One, which is what we have, must be completely different than every other Omnibus. Almost. And, like, I don't know what happened. Like, if the readers just weren't liking it and the editor's like, oh, you just have to basically change manga with keep it the same title or what. But, like, why not just lead with the good stuff? Like, I don't know. But because that's what that book is supposed to be about intergenerational trauma. But from what I was reading, it's just about uh happy go lucky schoolgirl moves in with hot guys. Happy go lucky. I don't know, that's how she came off to me. I, I mean, I, I okay, yes, that's her character. She's kind of happy go lucky, but mm. it's it's what you didn't get to was that happy go luckiness was mm. covering up the trauma of her sure. mother's well, and father's deaths. Maybe if they would have snuck that into the first Omni, it might have been better. But, um, so I didn't struggle as much to read this, which is why I gave, I thought a five, like on the, on the daddy weave scale, a five is pretty high for a shoujo. I guess. 
I mean, it's not as good as Limit, but... But Limit's, again, Limit's not a romance. Yeah, whatever. Limit is basically a shonen. It's the it's the one shonen I've ever found that I think is better for male readers than uh, female I mean, readers, I'm going to read like, it sometime. Yeah, I guess Cowboy Bebop is technically shoujo. Yeah. But whatever. That's definitely a show, and they just got snuck into a shoujo publication. Uh, anyway, where do I want to go? For- Actually, you know what would have made this better? Mm. What could have taken this up to a seven mm. for me is if there would have been more focus on the powers and, and snuck in some battle shonen type stuff. Well, okay, so to talk about, because obviously mm. the majority of the book is not about the powers. Oh, like almost none of it is about well, the Well, the powers. second volume, it does come in more. More, but by like one page. Like, I don't know. Andy. But like, uh, I think if they had, like you said, if they talked more mm. about the political mm. struggles, mm. the like, because they talk about how if you're a powerful family mm. that you take orders from the uh the emperor yeah the, the emperor, emperor. Yeah. and like if you have the favor of the emperor you have more power within society mm-hmm. and so they only hint at those kinds of things and i think i do agree that it would have been nice if some of that was pulled in a little like, bit more i'm gonna be real with you i feel like they cut volume two one chapter too short because at the very end, when Kudo comes up to the uh, Tatsuishi family, fucking lightning bolts down the door. I'm like, yes, let's go. I, I was really let's sad go. when it ended there, too. <laughs> but, okay. So they cut out the best. Now, they cut here's the, the thing. Part. These were light novels first. That's true. Yeah. And so it does make me wonder where the light novels ended in telling their stories. So. Oh, I bet you this is still, like, one light novel. Probably. Yeah. And also, I think it's funny that... Uh, the light novels are published by Yen Press, if I recall correctly, mm. but the mangas are published by Square Enix. That is kind of strange. Yeah, I know. Uh, fun fact, would, but uh, I still think a five was a generous rating for I me. Mean, it guess. is probably higher than you thought. You probably thought I was going to come in here and give it a one. I didn't think you were going to give it a one. Okay, but it wasn't as bad I was. As I was skeptical shot. because of how you read it. Yeah, because I didn't want to read it. You are terrible. I know. Like the worst, the I worst I've terrible. ever been at not wanting to read something was Planetess. That was just awful. Yeah, you hated that so much, that and then you so still bad. gave it like a four, which was weird. I'm more generous than you. I guess if if I had... I'm generous in my reading and in my ratings. I guess so, but uh, the. Except for that one, which I, we, I read we, it and I didn't like it, and I rated it a one. What was that? The uh, the mom Eli, one. Eli, Eli, yeah. I liked your facial expression at the bookstore today when I showed you volume two. <laughs> it really dropped, didn't it? it? It was like that meme of that guy like standing up in the football or like in the baseball stadium going. <laughs> <It was> okay. <laughs> but uh, no, we already know that I'm terrible. The 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 real the real fantasy is that like you married me because I don't know you're you're generous and not as <laughs> strict as me I don't know I don't know what I'm saying I don't know that I have anything else to say about this There's my opinions on this This is a seven That's a five from me I mean I guess a five is pretty good You know what I might read two more chapters of volume three just to see what he does i want to see what happens because he dude he they kidnap his woman okay first of all i was a little sad that they went with the kidnapping trope Mm -hmm. but they did it really well in my opinion yeah it was fine like i like the way that the sister found her i like that Mm -hmm. they came in and they just took her i like that the other guy came to kudo and was like wait 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 wait, let me help you 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 mean they had to do that awesome detective work of the person with the best motive did it no, no, what I'm saying... You really needed Batman to no, figure that mystery no, out. No, I'm not saying it was a okay. mystery. What I'm saying yeah. is is I like that the sister mm. was the one that found her. Sure. Oh, I also love... I love, I, I will say I love to hate the sister because I loved how she kept saying, let's just switch husbands. Yeah, let's just I'm like, swap. well, let's just swap. And like, they use the word swap. Yeah, the and I was just like, whenever she, she said that like two, three times, yeah. and I'm just like, how is... Of course everyone is recoiling at the word of let's just swap. Well, and internet porn's not even a thing in this time, which is <laughs> which is especially great. But no, but I like, like that the one guy was so upset yeah. that he's like, 
ah, oh, I want to go and save her. And then he sees Kudo and he's just like, I can't really do anything here, can I? It's yeah. all going to be this lightning dude. <laughs> I will say with the sister Kaya, um, I do like that trope of the person with everything being jealous of the person with nothing. And they're doing it well. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Fernand Mondego in oh, really? uh, The Count of Monte Cristo. I guess more of the movie and not the book because they changed sure. quite a bit in the movie. But the whole idea in the movie is he's jealous of Edmund because Edmund has the one thing that he can't buy. Mm-hmm. And just like in this, Mio has the one thing that Kaya can't get. And no matter how much she bats her lashes at daddy, no matter what she tries to do, can't have him. Mm-hmm. And even if she were to somehow swap Kudo would kick her to the curb. Yeah, he wouldn't like her, so it doesn't matter. The whole thing is he's rejected so many women because they were exactly like her. Like her, yeah. Yeah, So uh, that was the one. That was one of the... Look, this thing did have redeeming things to it. Look, you saying that you're willing to read like the next chapter or two... I want to see him kick some ass. (laughs) Dude, maybe maybe Shoujo would do a lot better if they... Well, you did like... Uh, Yona of the have, Dawn because it it's a little ass kicking in it. What, what they need is, you know how they have battle shonen? They need battle shoujo where like you do some, hey, senpai, no, I, I guess Sailor Moon is probably the closest. You're probably. Gonna, and I read that. I'm sure there's more out there. Maybe it's just not making its way over. Well, whatever. Well, I'm pointing out that I read two volumes of Sailor Moon. Mm. There's some shoujo I read. But yeah, where, you know, you do the senpai, please notice me, but then you like go off and fight and have a training arc and all this. <laughs> The training arc. You gotta have the training arc, right? Well, I will say in this though, it isn't the girl fighting though. It is it's the dude. The and obviously, she's gonna have a quirk or whatever. Yeah, or maybe it's just the genetic. Well, no, they hinted at her have with those dreams of her having some kind of power. No, I think she has a, a power. I think that the years of abuse just probably made it manifest late in life. If maybe. that makes yeah. sense. So, yeah. anyway, now I don't have anything else to talk about. <laughs> with this i've said everything okay so we've 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 talked a lot of feminism today on this we got political yes here. yes look the way you talk doesn't always match the way you feel sometimes and that's all i'm going to say about that like you talk you talk like a guy who would not be feminist you, you, you know you know but you are more feminist than than you would think like other people yes. might think yeah i don't know that i'm a feminist but i am sympathetic to the plight of women that's why i said more thing. than you would think you know this is going to be a, if it's a, a scale this is going to be a stretch to make an analogy of but i'm kind of like Worf from star trek like Worf is proudly klingon he does all the klingon traditions he tries to raise his son to be Klingon, but he ultimately lives with humans and he does not expect, you know, uh, the humans to do the same things that Klingons do. No honor killings, no none of this. But when he's alone and it's time to be a Klingon, he's Klingon, right? That, that's me. Like, I'm a guy, right? I like masculine things. When I'm hanging out with the guys, it's all talk about titties and, and dicks and all this kind of thing, Why right? Why are guys talking? Okay, go ahead. But, like, I also live with women, so, you know, I got to be sensitive. Because, yeah, I don't want a 45-year-old guy and, you know, trying to hook up with daughter. Or I, I hope that she wouldn't have a crush on someone, you know, Mel that much, much older. Yeah, so, like, I'm saying that I don't want daughter to open up her email and just be, like, penises everywhere. I don't want that. Guys, guys, stop sending dick pics, okay? Just stop. Yes, unless stop. it's Unless it's requested. If you get a request for one, send one. Requests are very different. Yeah, so. And, and it should always you should always wait for oh someone to ask. I might edit this out, but you know what I've been noticing in pornography lately? Oh my gosh. What? Is it there's like, especially like lesbian porn? Oh my gosh. Okay, go ahead. They're starting to ask for consent. Like on camera, like as part of. The thing. That's kind like, of sweet. Like they're kissing and it's time to do a little more. And then they, they always ask, hey, do you mind if I do this? And then the other girl's like, yes. And then they do it and they have a good time. But like. <laughs> they do it and 
they have a good time. Well, what else did you want me to say? I don't know. I was sanitizing it. I know, it's fine. It's fine. But what I'm saying is like, yeah, no. in the 80s and 90s, like, it's just... No, that's okay. We don't need to get into anymore. It's any straight more. to pound town. There's no... <laughs> There's no consent. No, I'm telling you that porn is being progressive. <laughs> that you're starting to see consent as like a major part of it. And yes, it's just in the girl on girl for right now. But that's how it starts. You know, you got to migrate it over to the hetero. Teaching, teaching straight men consent through lesbian porn. Yes. Good job. Good how job. else are you going to do know. it? I don't know. <laughs> Five this under you learn something new every day. I guess so. <laughs> I thought consent was sexy. No, <laughs> don't just... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> do we need a minute here? Oh, yeah. Take a drink here. <laughs> I feel like this is a good place to transition. I think so. To uh <laughs> So we're done with these. <laughs> Let's talk about. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you gonna be okay? No. <laughs> I didn't expect you to laugh this much. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. Take okay, a minute. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. So let's talk about. Go, just go. Channel lineups. And things like that, what we do at the end of every show. So, uh, I'm sorry that I've been putting it off and not being on top of it, but we got to mail out one of your art commissions. Yes, from... it is done. It's been, well, for Christmas and just holidays and then yeah. just get everything. Yes. It, we haven't really had but time. But I am making it my goal to get it packaged up tomorrow and sent out on Monday. Um, and then we'll show it in the next hall so other people can see it. Um, and hopefully they'll have gotten it by then and all that. Um, you've been busy making new thumbnails for the channel, but you're almost to an end on that and you'll start on the next, the next one. Yeah. commission. So everyone who won a commission, don't worry, you're still in the pipeline, okay? It just takes a minute. Yeah. Um, but as far as next videos, the very next video is going to be the monthly haul for January. Um, and then our first video in February, uh, we've made it kind of like we're getting, uh, official support from publishers. Uh, Viz sent us a bunch of manga and we will try talking about them in the uh, next episode. Some of it might be tough because for instance, we got a, uh, Dragon Quest Volume 5. Like, yeah, it's kind of in the we, middle. And... But we don't have one through four. Yeah. So, nor are we going to buy it. I Probably don't, not. I mean, I don't, we might, we might raw dog it and just be like, fuck it, we're going to read Volume 5. Yeah, say, I, like, I think that's where I'm going to, because I feel like since they were kind enough mm, to send us free stuff, that I should at least read right. what they sent us. And it's, most of these are not Volume 1s. Oh, none of them. Oh, there's one one shot. Well, actually, there's two one shots. We got... The Before Chainsaw Man mm. by Tatsuki Fujimoto, which is an anthology. So that's like a volume one. And then we got a Demon Slayer light novel. I don't <sighs> think we will read that. Probably not. Sorry, it's light Biz. novel. That's well, I just don't think we would get it read in time. There's even if, also even that. if we just wanted to. Time, yeah. But I'll already tell you that's gonna go straight to our niece who loves Demon Slayer. Yeah. Apparently. I don't know if she can read well, that well yet your sister can store it until she gets old enough or they can do bedtime stories or I something don't know. I, don't I don't know, know. but the other stuff we'll we'll try to read even though it's like uh in the middle of stuff and yeah. we'll see what happens maybe we'll love it so much we got to go back and get some volume ones could be who could knows be. that's that's what makes it crazy crazy um and then our second video in february we've already talked about it. it's going to be our uh weeb hot takes um, we've had some people email us, uh, I'll put the email up again, because remember the deal is you send in your hot takes and you can send in more than one. Okay. It's fine. Um, and everyone who sends a, a hot take in is going to be entered into a chance to win a manga from our pile of shame. 
And to be honest, any of those volumes that we end up, that Viz sent us could possibly could end up in, there. in yeah. there. So you never know. Um, but if you submit a ton of hot takes, you only get into the drawing one. So don't think that you're going to pump up the numbers or anything. But uh, again, email them, emailing them is best. I guess put it in the comments if you're really that lazy. I'll try to get it put over. No guarantee if you put it in the comments. Yeah. Um, and then I think at some point I'm going to do like a uh, thing on Instagram collecting hot takes. But send a bunch. I think we've only got like five. We got to put like an hour episode out, people. We need lots of hot takes. To or do you want to. our show to only be five minutes? Yeah. I'm sure everyone wants that, but it's not happening. <laughs> You're like, yeah. even if I only have five, we're yeah. going to make this stretch. Yeah. So there we go. That's the channel lineup. There's the update on uh, commissions. Oh, there was an update I forgot to put in the last haul video that I think is important. I was looking at a lot of podcast hosting options for the show and then looking at the amount of work it would take to do that. And seeing how slow YouTube is to pay out on ad rev. And I think I'm going to put the podcast version on pause. Because one, it's a lot of work that I don't want to do. Two, people have stopped asking for it. And maybe they stopped asking because I said this. And they'll go back to pestering me. In which case, I guess we'll revisit it. But I think the people who wanted it as a podcast have either dropped off they just don't watch us anymore anyway i don't know but I, i'm putting that idea on pause because if you really want it i guess keep pestering i get yeah but it's too much work not enough people are asking for it anymore and the money situation isn't where i would like it to be because when i did a podcast it was like 10 bucks a month or whatever and i thought that the ad rev would kind of cancel that out but it's not because the ad rev is stupid low but um anyway that's so be anyone wondering where the podcast version of that's that's where it's at but always subject to change so but what will never change is the fact that sonic 3 was on two cartridges <laughs>